Hey guys, it's Steven here and welcome back to another match reaction after Manchester City's final preseason game ahead of the Community Shield. 4-1 victory over Blackpool. It was good fun, over though we didn't see the last five minutes, but you know, we'll forget about that ever happening. But anyway, before I dive into today's match reaction, I've got something a little bit exciting actually. Uh, of course, football is back for a brand new season, so I've teamed up with OneFootball to bring you all a dead exciting opportunity. Uh, OneFootball have launched a new season prediction giveaway where you will be able to predict the results of the five Premier League matches that you see on screen right now to one side of me see these games if you predict the scores of them the winner will win an incredible bundle consisting of the following a one football t-shirt and you may have seen me wear one on stream before also uh, the kit of your team of choice it has to be Manchester City surely and excitingly a copy of FIFA 2022 all you gotta do to win is uh, basically click the link in the description below follow the instructions on the form by downloading one football uh, if you haven't already of course and filling in the fields and the form present with your data and predictions of the five opening Premier League fixtures and there is more than that. Once you submit your entry, you'll be redirected to another landing page where you'll be able to predict one fixture from Serie A, Bundesliga, La Liga and League uh, opening matches. If you participate in this global giveaway, which is not mandatory, you will be in the chance of winning a pair of match tickets and the prize is separate to the local giveaway bundle prize. It's a lot taken there, but it's all very exciting. If you've got any doubts whatsoever, go and check out the T's and C's over on the landing page. So basically, what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description, Download one football and try and win the, the big new season prediction giveaway. Go and enjoy it with one football down below. But let's get on to this game. Um it was good, man. It was good fun. Yet again, another entertaining preseason game that we saw lots and lots of lovely little stories emerge from. Of course, the headline was Mr. Gundogan, Ilkay Gundogan, Mr. Whippy back in form in front of goal, grabbing a lovely, very kind of Gundogan of last season brace, really, basically. Uh, two lovely, tidy finishes within the area that a classic number nine would be very proud of. And to be honest, I thought the story of the game was largely, once again, about the first team players finding their way to fitness with a couple of nice little uh, academy uh, cameos once again. Um, Mares looks like a guy who clearly had nothing to do over this over the holidays than just relax for once, you know. Uh, first team player actually getting to relax over the summer and you can tell he's come back refreshed and ready to go for next season. And Joao Cancelo as well to a different extent. Obviously he wasn't involved in the Euros because of isolation reasons due to COVID, but he's another one that looks really fired up to make an impression this season. Uh, and likewise, I would say Mendy as well, man. I'm not saying Mendy will jump into the first team, but you can tell the guy's in really good shape and has had a little bit of time to get his fitness back and I thought he looked pretty solid as well. But for me, the story was all about, you know, Gundogan once again finding that rhythm and that fitness and showing how sharp he is in front of goal. And Finadinho as well with some absolutely lovely, lovely passes uh, showing that the guy's still got it despite being a relatively old man, so to speak. It's just not even fair that he's that good at football at that age. Um, stop it, Werner. You're making me feel old. Because uh, we are old, I guess, at the same time. But either way, going for the team individually, Stefan was once again perfectly fine in defence. He had no chance with a penalty, but I wouldn't really blame him for that. Though Diaz... I'll say he got his mistake out of the way. It was a soft penalty. He was he was very leaden-footed. He was flat-footed, got turned too easily, and it was a sloppy penalty to give away. But it's fine. It's pre-season. That is where you make those mistakes. Just don't do it in the community shield and onwards, and no one's got a problem. Ake alongside him looked totally fine as well. Mendy and Cancelo have talked a little bit about Cancelo. Uh, Cancelo looking lively and creative as he has done all preseason of him being totally honest um, a lovely little assist as well with his weaker foot to Gundogan for one of the goals uh, and Mendy getting forward nice nice and composed as well I, I thought Mendy was decent today um, into midfield Finandino just belying his age entirely Gundogan good once again Cole Palmer I thought had a really really nice little game as well so much skill and I like the way he was drifting in the channels linking up with Rian Mahrez on the right and then giving the job of a false nine in the second half which is not necessarily his best position but I thought he was good once again. Some lovely jinking little runs and what a couple of nice free kicks. He's such a good, talented young player, he really is. A dozy with his third goal in three games. A lot of people will be watching this going, oh, is this guy, is this a star that we didn't know about? Um, Adozi's a very, very, very good player. I'm not trying to be harsh on the lad here or anything like that. I'm trying to be as measured as I can. Um, but I think it's probably fair to say that last season, he wasn't the star of the EDS team in the way that Cole Palmer may have been, or the lap or Makatee, or Omar Lavi, or someone like that. But that doesn't mean he wasn't very good at times, and he was very, very good at times. Um... 
I mean, he's got a little bit of a way to go to get higher in the in the academy ranked pecking order, if that's if that means anything. Um, but he's still a very talented player, and uh, it wouldn't be the first time that a young player has seized an opportunity like this and made a bit of a name for himself. Because uh, sometimes football can do that. A young player that wasn't necessarily the academy star can become the star very quickly. And he's had a great preseason, just running at people, scoring goals. He's a good young player, and basically anyone who plays for City's academy side is a good footballer, capable of starring as well at professional level. Uh, Obviously, this is just a friendly, but he must be very happy with his performances, and he's done himself a world of good in his City rep. A very good, a very exciting young winger. I'm delighted for him as well. Ben Knight, once again, lively uh, and involved. Not as lively as involved as previous games, but definitely a decent term. And Mahrez, uh, classy, um, effective as he always is. Into the second half, uh, Romeo Lavia finally got on. It was a shame we only saw 10 minutes of it before the cameras cut out, unfortunately. But he looks neat, tidy and sharp. Uh, likewise, McAtee when he got on as well. Jan Kusa got on. Didn't really see much of him being honest. I'm sure he's, a, you know, I'm sure he would have impressed though in those five minutes that we didn't get to watch. Um... Who hey, else? Morgan Rogers came on and looked really sprightly and really involved as well. Rogers, I reckon, would probably leave Manchester City, but he's such a good footballer and he'd be very effective, even for Blackpool, man. If they wanted him, he'd be very, very good, pretty much for any, I would say, um, football league tied. He's such a good little footballer. And who else did we see get on as well? Tommy Doyle. It's nice to see him back involved with the first team. They didn't get a particularly long time to impress, really, I would say, but it was good to see them. And of course, Bernardo coming on, which was lovely to see Bernardo returning. I'm still not convinced his future will be a City next season. Season, especially if City do sign Grealish and Kane but I absolutely love Bernardo with most of my heart the guy I love him to bits he's a quality footballer and he was nice seeing uh, lively and involved once again um and likewise, it's good to see a little bit of Philippe Sandler. But we're going to need this full squad ahead of the Community Shield game in early season. And even if Bernardo leaves, he's probably still got a tiny bit of a role to play before that happens, in my personal opinion. Uh, have I missed anyone else out there? I'm pretty certain I've covered just about everyone. Let me just double check the lineup, Sam. Yeah, Gomez came on at centre-back. Uh, Van Sass, the young keeper, came on, but they didn't have an awful lot to do, if I'm being honest. But it was fun seeing these players get a run out. Um, it was a good game, man. It was a good game. And City games have been really fun in pre-season. Uh, I've enjoyed a lot of them. Uh, obviously, we've got the big one at the weekend now, and I will be doing a watch-along, of course, over on this YouTube channel here. I've done them over on Twitch so far, but for the big games, I'll do them on YouTube uh, for now, I reckon, because uh, it's a lot more... Uh, I enjoy it over there. It's the OG place for me, personally. But this game was fun. Of course, you're all here as well. Because you got Grealish on the brain. Jack Gorn, of course, tweeted earlier as well, saying, "Yep." When asked, someone asked if it's going to happen, uh, yeah, I mean, it was is Grealish soon? And he said, "Yep." To which, obviously, many people wanted to know how soon, which he hasn't replied. What I will say, uh, uh, when you look around and try and find anything positive towards the Villa camp, you can find absolutely fuck all, other than some random NFL account, which is clearly a fraud account made up by someone looking for some clout to play off people's insecurities about their own club. So there's absolutely nothing at all pointing towards positive news for Aston Villa. So just do all the math, put all the pieces together, put that puzzle together, which implies one major heavy thing, and realise that currently the only thing you're scared of as a Manchester City fan is time as if it's been weeks and weeks and weeks it's been literally a handful of days and you forget that obviously businesses can be slow to deal with things I know because we've dealt with businesses personally you have as well at some point how many times have you forgot to get back to them via email Aston Villa aren't just gonna say yes and reply to every email straight away as Nicholas just said, think how long bank transactions can take. I don't know what it is, but in general, uh, these things can take time because it, it's two opposing parties dealing with each other that necessarily don't want to agree with each other, but they may have to. But it, it can it can take time because people can take time, is what I'm saying. So if you're wondering why it's taking time, well, it's been about two working business days. You know, uh, that, that's literally it. It's been that. So start spending time refreshing Twitter and remember that a hundred million pound transaction probably takes more than a few days to complete sometimes. Everything points towards one conclusion currently and it's a positive one for Manchester City I'm not saying it's going to happen but I'm saying right now everything points towards one thing there has been zero news from any reliable source whatsoever about Grealish changing his mind or signing a contract with Aston Villa other than Fabrizio Romano suggesting that if he didn't sign for Manchester City he would sign a contract which is obvious that's obvious that to mean like if it isn't sunny it's probably raining I mean that's you know if it isn't nighttime it's daytime Yes, that's how these works. I'm not saying Fabrizio's wrong. I'm just saying, well, yeah, if you've done sign for City, of course you'll sign a contract. That is the only bit of information that suggests 
every it suggests anything to the contrary uh, against everything that's happening towards Villa and Greedy. So basically, keep your calm, keep your composure, and don't worry about the Greedy stuff. And either way, I'm sure you've seen enough today to uh, be reminded how good and how talented our squad is. Guys, let me know what you thought of the preseason friendly down below. Go and enter that new season prediction giveaway by clicking the link in the description and try and win your favourite Man City kit or uh, maybe the away one, you know? Um, a one football t-shirt, which I love wrapping. I've got a one football t-shirt and I genuinely love wearing it. It's great. And excitingly, a copy of FIFA 2022. And maybe, maybe even more than that if you went to the... Um, the big European predictions bit as well. Guys, thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Big love to Scott Denemy, my Patreon producer, for being a legend. And I'll catch you maybe, maybe later on if anything happens on Twitch later on for another stream. In a bit.